Mark does join us live now to talk more about what he experienced there. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thanks for having me. So uh, first off, obviously, I'm sure a very scary situation. Walk me through how all of this played out, what you saw, what you heard. Yeah, so I was traveling on 95. I saw from a distance dark black smoke. At the time, I just thought it was a car fire. Not unusual for that area of the city. Uh, as I started to approach the uh, the, uh, the, situ the uh, fire, I could see the black smoke and flames coming up from both sides of the highway. Uh, by that point, I was already past the exit. Uh, I did see an opening where I could drive through look safely, which I did. And as I drove through, you felt this major bump on the road. You'll see when you're watching a video, you'll see me pan over to the left and you'll see a white car. You could see how how high they they uh, jump on the bump. Uh, after I go through, I look in my rear mirror. I see that's where all the cars stopped. And that's where I'm told by you know, unofficially. That's when the highway collapsed right thereafter. When you're looking through this video, watching it back, when you're seeing the photos, the aerial images that have come out of there, what goes through your mind watching that now? It was, I'm shocked. I'm still in a shock over the last 24 hours. Again, at that moment, when I drive through, I just assume it was a brush fire because I saw the grass on fire on, both, on the side of the highway. I couldn't see underneath the highway, of course. Um, and then hitting that bump, as bad as it looks when you watch the video, it's a, a section of 95 that's under construction anyway, so I just assume that's what it was. Uh, once I found out the horror and the real details of what was going on, I just, I'm still, I still can't believe it. Have you ever in your life seen anything like this, anything of this magnitude? No, nothing. And I, and I saw a lot of crazy stuff in my time as a, as a sergeant. Uh, this, this tops it. And the portion of I-95 where the road did collapse, for people who aren't necessarily familiar with the area, it sounds like it's an area that is uh, heavily traveled, used by a lot of people in that area. Yes, yeah, so this section, uh, th this is in the Tacony section of Northeast Philadelphia. Uh, this is where most of the people in, this, in the Northeast section of Philadelphia will use this intersection to get on 95 or to get off. Uh, it's right in the middle of the main artery from, you know, uh, Washington, D.C. up to New York. You're right in the middle there. So this is going to be a nightmare for traffic. When a car breaks down on 95 in this area, the neighborhoods come to a crawl. So for this to happen now and it'll probably be months before they repair it, it's going to be a, a disaster. And that's what I was going to ask, because when you're talking about months to possibly repair this, there's really no timeline just yet on how long this is going to take. I imagine it will be a, a nightmare for folks because of the fact that you now have to take detours that uh, really add up. You're talking about dozens and dozens of miles just to get around this, right? Yeah, so people that are coming from this outside the city, which would be north of Philadelphia coming down, they're option is going to have to be jump over to New Jersey and you're going to add 20 30 minutes just on your time there because you got to go so far over down to back in but everybody's going to do that so now all the other roadways that people would use like I said when there was an accident or a delay on the highway where people would get off just to avoid that that's going to be constant for however long this takes and the city, these neighborhoods around the highway in Philadelphia are not meant for heavy traffic. And they were having problems last night, and that was a Sunday night. I'm sure it's going to be even worse, you know, this week. They'll probably figure something out in the next couple weeks to make it a little easier. But, yeah, you're going to add a lot of time to your travel. So one day later here, what questions do you still have, if any, about what happened, how this happened, that sort of thing? Uh, great question. I want to know who was the trucking company, the driver? Is there a criminal investigation? And I think the one question I have, and again, this is because I have no idea and no one has said anything in the last 24 hours, 
Is this normal? Can a, a tanker truck full of fuel cause this much devastation and destruction in that short amount of time? Because again, when I see this, when you see this video, I was already on the highway about six minutes and saw the beginning of the of the smoke coming up. So that I'm told when I took this video at 6.29 a.m., I think officially reports are that the crash happened at 6.19. So within 10 minutes of the crash, me driving through it, and then the collapse shortly after, I don't, and maybe this is normal. Maybe that's what this fuel can do to, and this is a brand new section of I-95. This was just rebuilt. They're just widening this out now. Uh, I just think it's a, I think it's crazy that something like that could happen so fast and destroy uh, both sides of the highway. The other side of the highway, although it's still intact, that's going to have to come down as well. For sure. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Is there anything you want to add before I let you go? Uh, no, that, that's it. I was just thankful that I was able to get through and everybody got through and nobody was hurt. <laughs> I think being at 630 on a Sunday morning really helped. Uh, this been a, a Monday morning we would have a different story today.